I don't even know where to start with this video. Where do I even begin? So much, so much. What's up guys? Let's start with that. How's it going? Welcome back to another video. Uh, I just wanted to do kind of an update video uh, about Kendall. Um, where we're at, where she's at, what's going on, what's coming up, how things are going, etc. Um, I don't even know where to start because there's been a lot happening. Um, but I think first of all, start with some gratitude and just saying thank you to all of you who continue to watch and support and and message us and things like that. Um, if you're watching for the first time, you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. Um, our middle daughter, Kendall, was diagnosed with a rare childhood cancer back in December, right before Christmas, called neuroblastoma. And what that is, is a very, it was, it was a really large tumor in her abdomen. It started, it was about 10 inches um, by 9 inches by 7 inches. Very large. It'd be like putting an adult head or so inside of a child's abdomen. It was very large. Here's a, a scan of it, and I'll try to circle the area of the tumor here, but it's very, very large. And we've been through a lot since then, had some really great results so far. Um, she's been through four rounds of chemo, has taken it like a champ. She's done stem cell collections for future stem cell transplants and things of that nature. And lately things have just been busy. It's been chaotic. It's been wild. It's been a lot. It's been overwhelming. It's been happy. It's been sad. It's been a lot of things. Um, so we haven't really made the videos that we hoped to make because frankly, there just isn't the, the mind space to be able to stitch together a cohesive video because we're trying very hard to be in the moment and make it all about Kendall and make sure that she's getting the smiles that she deserves and to make sure that she is getting her requests fulfilled and that she gets to do the things that she wants to do um, and that we're making sure that we're being present for those things. And I have filmed a lot of stuff. That's why I don't know how this video is going to go because I filmed a lot of things, but again, none of it's been cohesive. So. Maybe I'll interject a few things here um, from a few weekends ago. She, out of nowhere, wanted to go to Cars and Coffee. So that was cool. That was fun. That was the first time Kendall has wanted to kind of do something like that in, in quite a while. I can't remember the last time she wanted to go to Cars and Coffee and, and go drive around in the NSX. The thing we did before that, I think, was the plane ride. Uh, which is something she was obviously ecstatic about and it was just sort of offered up to us But honestly, she wasn't feeling all that great We had just come off of a round of chemo and she was on a lot of pain meds and stuff and she enjoyed it so much But she was still sort of down and her energy levels were low So it was really exciting for me to see her with like much higher um, Much higher energy levels and a lot of that's hemoglobin related like her hemoglobin gets really low and she just gets really lethargic. It's hard to get her off the couch and moving and doing anything. Um, so anyways, as you know, she went in, I think three days, uh, that following week was like Monday, Wednesday, Friday and got blood transfusions, got platelet transfusions. Um, a lot of things brought a lot of levels back up and then her white blood cell counts started finally coming back up and, um, and she felt like a million bucks. And then we got the okay from the doctors to take a quick trip. So we've got surgery coming up um, tomorrow, actually. We leave tomorrow. So by the time you guys are watching this, Kendall's probably having surgery or maybe already had surgery um, to get the tumor removed. And we'll talk about some scans and, and all the other things um, that has happened. There's so much has happened. That's what I'm trying to kind of fill you guys in for the ones who are really following along with what's happening and, and whatnot, because I feel sort of obligated to share a lot of this information because so many of you are, are seemingly so vested in Kendall's best interest. And I know a lot of you care and I get a lot of messages 
uh, for updates and that sort of thing from friends and family. And these videos are the best sort of easiest place to point people for a lot of updates and information and to see that Kendall is doing really well. I mean, for the most part, when you see her out and about and in public and in a restaurant or going to Disney World or Cars and Coffee or whatever the thing is, you would have no idea that she's got cancer and that she's um, that she's dealing with so much. I didn't think I was going to cry. This kid's incredible, you guys. She's got this surgery coming up. As I said, and when we went to Cars and Coffee, we stopped at my dad's house afterwards to kind of hang with him. And my mom was out of town up in Ohio taking care of my grandmother, who wasn't doing so well. Um, and my dad's been through a lot of medical stuff and a lot of uh, surgeries, and he feels he feels bad for Kendall. You know, he's just like hates that she has to go through this because he's been through so much of it and <laughs> he asked Kendall how she felt about the surgery and I think we were both equally shocked with her answer of saying that she was excited for it and we expected to hear that she was nervous or scared or um, not looking forward to it in some capacity but she said She's like, oh, I'm ready. I'm excited. And my dad wrote in a Facebook post, he's like, you could have knocked me over with a feather. And he, I, in the moment, I could see he was just shocked by that answer. And he said, really? You're excited? She's like, well, yeah, once the tumor's out, I don't have cancer anymore. And it's like. I think there's a lot to learn from these kids that are going through things that don't know they don't know otherwise it's just they know that once she knows in her situation because it hasn't spread anywhere else in her body that once the tumor is out technically she's cancer free she's in remission now we have a long way to go we have a long way to go. But anyways, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Knowing all of this was coming up, we have this surgery that she's probably having as you're watching this. We're looking for sort of a last opportunity to do something fun and exciting. And the doctors gave us a little bit of time. So we were able to like quickly book a trip to Disney World because that's what Kendall wanted to do. And she kept asking when we get to go to Disney again. And she loves it there as you could imagine. So um, I told her, I said, as soon as the doctors say we can go, I promise we, we will go. And they they gave us the thumbs up. They said, just, you know, be careful. You know, her, her immune system is still low, so don't, you know, do your best in crowds of people and things of that nature. But um, anyways, so we just got back from that trip uh, yesterday. So we're taking today to sort of regroup, repack, and deal with things in the office that's another thing that's been just like chaotic for us is things in the office. We've got employees coming and going. We've got other just stuff happening in the business that creates lots of challenges for us that we're having to navigate um, alongside of this thing with Kendall. And it's just a lot. It's a lot going on. So anyways, that's why there's been sort of the lack of our normal videos and uh, uh sort of just talking to you guys update video is the best I could do. So I hope this is sufficient for you. But uh, Disney was awesome. Here is uh, a few moments from Disney uh, to enjoy. All right, we made it to Bucky's Daytona. We went inside, grabbed some sandwiches, some brisket, pork. Hey, you are a mean little baby. That's a mean baby. I forgot that we were bringing Boondock Brandy with us. You guys hear her inside? You remember Boondock Brandy? That's for anybody who's new here doesn't know Boondock Brandy. That's Brandy's got like a hick side, a hick voice that comes out. We named her Alter I Ego. Song later Boondock Brandy. 
Which one is that? The duck rain is coming oh. to town, ready to go, it's time to get found. Are you going down, are you, are you just doing this now? No. Then what'd you get? Um, Pulled pork sandwich? It's basically yummy. sloppy joe. What's up? I got pineapple and pretzels. I took the pineapple. Because I'm wearing my pretzel shirt. Oh yeah. Well, Alright, we've made it into our room here at Animal Kingdom Lodge. The special thing about this is that our room is right here on what they call the savanna. And if you can see over here, there's a giraffe, there's a zebra. I'll get in a little bit tighter, but you can see this giraffe eating. You can see the zebra hanging out and I'm sure there's lots and lots of other animals that kind of roam and hang out and chill down here. But Kendall, what do you think about this? I love it. It's pretty cool and special, huh? Hannah. I like the giraffes and the zebras. You know, earlier I thought you said you wanted a rhino, but then I realized you said you wanted to ride it. Yeah. <laughs> Betty, yes. you know what we need to do in Disney Springs? What? We need to go to World of Disney. Why? What's there? Ears. Mickey and Minnie ears. What's wrong with those ears? I don't have <laughs> other ones. I need funner ones, not donut ones. Donut ones are the best ones. Yeah, but I need new ones. These are Cameron's old ones. I need brand new ones. Oh my gosh. Hey, what's up with you? Trying to get a better view of the animals. Oh, sure. How'd you even get up there? She's a good climber. <laughs> You've already changed too? Yeah. You look beautiful. Cameron, you changed also? In five minutes, you guys unpacked and changed and ready to let go? Yeah. Are, we, we are efficient. See? Look at my dress. Yeah. So now that we're back from Disney again, we're just regrouping, repacking, and we hit the road in the morning. Um, we finally, you know, it's funny is, but before we could leave for Disney World, they had to do all these scans, uh, these CT scans, the MIBG scans, check all her blood levels and all that stuff. Uh, so, but we never got the results from those scans while we were at Disney World, and we just got them today. So we had to spend all this time in Disney sort of hoping and praying and assuming that everything was good and we just went with that mindset of like no news is good news. Um, so we had a video conference this morning with our surgeon to kind of review those scans, talk about the surgery plan, talk about what to expect after, um, how much time she'll be in the ICU, what the incisions will be like, what the the plan is once they kind of go in and you know we're looking at the scans together and so here's the update on the scans I'll, I'll show you guys so again here's the before of the tumor and you can see how massively large this tumor is here and what it looks like now and i don't have the exact dimensions offhand but you can see the stark difference in the size of this mass being roughly 10 inches originally down to, I'm assuming, about three inches now. I think it was six and a half centimeters, which is about three inches or so. Um, and then, you know, the previous scan before this had shrunk 50% from that original. So from about 10 inches to about half of that, and now it's, you know, not quite half again, but it's obviously very small. I'm guessing maybe the size of my fist or so. Um, so it's a really good time for them to go ahead and get in there and get it out. She's going to lose a kidney as well during the surgery. Um, and they've got to, they have to scrape it off of things. So the way this neuroblastoma tumor grows, and I guess it's, um, the way it, it 
behaves that is sort of like they have to peel it off and scrape. It's not like a hard tumor, like they're just cutting a baseball out of there and taking it out. It's like you, they have to like scrape it and peel it and remove it off of things. So it's going to be a lengthy surgery. They're estimating anywhere from like three to eight hours or something like that. Um, so Brandy and I obviously have quite a long day ahead of us as we sit and wait for her to come out of surgery. And then she'll be in the ICU for a day or two and lots of recovery. And But they want her kind of up and moving pretty quickly after that. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. That's what's going on. That's, um, I think, the most recent updates. I'm sure there's things. Oh, oh. The other thing that's happening that's been going on is the charity boxing event that you guys saw the promo for. I've talked about it in another couple of videos prior to this, but that event is happening on April 6th. So again, if you're watching this now, it's probably already happened. Um, I plan to film that and shoot that and make some sort of content and video about that, but it's been a really cool and incredible and humbling experience to be part of that and for my my buddy Mark to really step up to the plate um, in honor of Kendall to fight. So what that is is a charity boxing event they're, they're doing to raise money for MUSC Children's Hospital, which is the hospital that Kendall goes to, and for the College of Charleston's athletic fund. So all the money being raised goes to help kids, uh, which is really cool. But Mark specifically, you know, you can donate to each individual boxer so you know you got people who are there's like a competitiveness to from the boxers on who can raise the most money but then obviously fighting in the ring is going to be the the big competition and the big main event and what's driving all of this and the entertainment and um getting behind it so the boxers have raised i just checked it was about sixty eight thousand dollars so far uh mark has raised about $14,000 so far. And I think he's the single biggest fundraiser, like as a individual, I think he's raised the most money individually so far, um, which is really cool. But anyway, it's really cool, really exciting thing to be a part of. So I'm looking forward to that event. Um, I can't wait to see sort of the outcome of that and how that goes, but that'll be fun to watch and I'll, there'll be a video from that. The next video you guys see will likely be surgery. So I plan to film at the hospital uh, around all the surgery stuff and document that if um, if you were one of the ones who are following along Kendall's journey um, and want to see what the process is like. I've talked to quite a few people who have been diagnosed with cancer since this and they've followed some of these videos. and. I think it's neat and I think it's interesting to share this stuff and this story so that people coming behind us can see what it's like. And I hope that it gives them um, a glimmer of hope, you know, that it's not um, not all bad stuff. And <laughs> it's funny. Um, sometimes when I watch these videos back, I often am I'm sitting there and I'm editing and I'm and I'm like listening to myself and I'm like man you really sound really happy and chipper to be talking about your daughter who has cancer and I and I'm like I really hope that this doesn't come across as like insensitive or that I don't care or whatever but honestly it's just our attitude about it we just have remained so positive and i think it's imperative that we've done that and i think it's just the the right attitude you have to have and you have to remain positive and i think you know we're not here we don't want a pity party we're not trying to be woe is me uh, or any of those types of things so it's very important for us to remain positive and, and that's what we continue to do so i hope it comes across that way more of a positive attitude about it and not that I don't care so I, I just I felt like I needed to say that because I've I've had that thought a few times and I mentioned it to a couple people and they were like no not at all are you kidding me like I think it's you guys are inspiring other people that you're being so positive about it and it's because it's so easy to get down on yourself and 
try to figure out why is this happening to me and Kendall doesn't deserve this and and all of that is true but the reality is like we don't have a choice at this point the only thing that we can do is be positive about it and Kendall is going to kick some ass you know we've got uh, tons of you guys praying for us and all these kinds of things so um yeah I just I, I felt like I needed to say that one but Anyways, a couple of videos coming out. Um, that's where we're at. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little update. Again, I'm sure I'm missing details, forgetting certain things. I'm just kind of riffing off the top of my head here. It's 8.30 at night, and I really should probably be home packing. But um, I wanted to get this out so that we didn't miss the documentation of Kendall's journey um, in some capacity. You know, I didn't want to skip a lot of these big happy moments in her journey of, you know, riding in the car with dad, shifting gears and, and going to Disney world. And like, I didn't want to skip that in this series because those positive moments are so impactful. All right. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.